the hell you need ball bearings for? Oh, come on, guys. It's so simple. Maybe you need a refresher course. Hey, it's all ball bearings nowadays. Hey, Fearless Mods fans, what is up? It is Biff, and we are back to work today on the 2005 Nissan Titan LE four-wheel drive. For far too long now, the bearings have been causing me problems. Um, let me just run you down how this started. So, I got new tires from Costco in June of 2017, so three years ago. Roughly 10 months after that, I had my first set of bearings that I replaced. Both of the front hubs uh, moved bearings from Rock Auto. Uh, a month later, I replaced the right one again. A month after that, I replaced the left one again. Three months later, I swapped them both out for a couple of SKF bearings from Rock Auto. Like I told you before, they did pretty good on helping me get those back uh, under warranty and that was all still covered. And then, nine months later, I replaced another one again on the right side. One more time, uh, in about six months after that, five months after that, I threw my hands up in the air, took it to the dealer in uh, Dayton, Ohio, and said, freaking diagnosis saying, figure out what's wrong, I don't care what it cost me, I gotta find out, is it the front diff? I mean, I was willing to pay anything. And they ended up replacing both front wheel bearings, giving me the company line that says, it's because you didn't use OEM, which I raised the BS flag on back then, but I'm like, whatever, now it's in your hands. Okay, so that was uh, December. I took it back in January of 20, immediately after, a month after I had had them replaced, just because I knew it didn't quite seem right yet. So something was still there, even though I had two new bearings. Four months later, in April of 20, I ended up replacing another one here at the uh, Nissan dealer here in Illinois and they replaced it with another OEM. But the brand that they had used before, Value Vantage, even though it was OEM, it was a lesser OEM. They could go to a higher quality OEM and that's the one that even though they were preaching to me in Dayton, Ohio at the Nissan dealer about using OEM, they gave me the lesser of the two OEM bearings, which kind of pisses me off to be to be frank with you. They put the, the, the nicer OEM one on there. I took it back again two months later and said that how come you didn't replace the right one, you only did the left one, it's still making noise. They said they could not duplicate it. I told them you gotta go over 70 miles an hour to really hear it and it's horrible. And I went out and drove it, it repeated it. I took it back, grabbed the service manager, took him for a ride with me and he could not deny it that he heard it. Um, so they took it in, they ended up replacing that right bearing again. Um, again, this was just barely over a month ago. Um, and it took away the bearing noise, but the grindy howl and vibration still existed. That is, for the record, six right side bearings and five left side bearings for a total of 11. One of the things they said it was if it was a bad Costco tires, that could have been the cause. And so I took it in to get a road force balance after I replaced that very last bearing um, to see if we could kind of narrow it down. All right, so we are here at uh, Firestone and we're getting ready to uh, have the truck um, checked for the road force wheel balance. That wheel has been moved to the rear and so if the wheel's out around or if the belt has slipped on the tire, then we should know something. So that's a standard balance. You just spin the wheel and it, it runs at 35 miles per hour. That's standard. So it's only 0.25 off on standard balance. So with the road force, it checks to see if the tire's out around comparative to the rim. If you got an oblong tire, this detects it. Yeah. That's the best recommendation Nissan had on the last one was they said see if it's uh, got a belt slipped or something and, and maybe this would show that. Nothing there. So that brings us up to today, which is where we are trying to get at this and figure out what's going on underneath this car. The tires seemed to good to go. They weren't that bad. They weren't that far out. Got them all balanced out. Um, and so now I'm going to drive towards 
a U-joint potentially causing the vibration at those speeds. So you've got the uh, shaft that comes from the transfer case um, back here and brings the power forward to the front wheels and so just kind of checking the front one here giving it some wiggles up and down that way and then turning it halfway and giving it some wiggles up and down that way there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of play in this u-joint here though there is a lot of rust and then if you come back to this back one here it comes right out of the transfer case you can got a lot of movement that direction so the the needle bearings in these two cups here on these sides are obviously worn or gone so now let's rotate it 90 and check these other ones and obviously I have play in the ends of these two but I still I also see play in the uh, the other ones inside here yeah so that you do is definitely bad even though the front one is good um, let's go ahead and work our way back here and check out the drive shaft with the, uh, the aft shaft here kind of interesting That feels pretty good I'm gonna try to rotate them opposite each other. I don't get a lot of movement I can't rotate it because the rear wheels are on the ground if I hold this front yoke like this and then try to wiggle this back shaft up and down twist up and down or left and right I don't seem to get much movement in this u-joint so I'm gonna to go to the back of the shaft now and check that one uh, again a lot of rust but I'm not getting any um, movement in the u-joint here so it seems to be decent uh, like I say there's a lot of rust my weld on the exhaust seems to be holding up fair um, crappy but fair the shocks are looking like they've seen better days, so it's probably just due for some uh, some suspension mods and some other TLC. Okay, there are a couple other things I just want to show you under here real quick. So, in case you're wondering, uh, hey, maybe this doesn't rotate um, when it's not in four-wheel drive. I'm in two-wheel drive right now when I rotate either of these tires or both. It does rotate, so that's both tires rotating forward right there. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is these shafts on either side here where the CV boots are for these front axles. This one I can rock pretty good. And it's a lot more than the other side which barely even moves or makes any noise. I'm not sure that that should be so loose in here. So maybe I've got something with an inner bearing here that's, uh, that's doing something to me. So any of these things could cause a vibration here. Um, let's go ahead and crawl back out and uh, talk about what might be going on here. Obviously, something causes a vibration at about 70 miles an hour because I really feel it and hear it kind of howling. Um, a little bit hard to tell if it's left or right side. So... Uh, that, that kind of makes it a little problematic, but because it keeps putting bearings out on both sides of the front, you know, it, it seems to be like it doesn't really matter. Um, so, would that U-joint vibration cause the bearings to be going out? Most likely not. Um, does it need to be replaced? Absolutely. So it could be causing a vibration in there at high speed that is uh, starting to cause some harmonics that I'm feeling through the whole floorboard and. And, uh, and getting a howl. Really, that left axle shaft inner hub where it uh, where it goes into the to the differential, that's the one that kind of causes me uh, the most concern about what could be possibly causing bearings to go out. It could be setting up vibrations that are then transferring somehow out to the to the bearing through that shaft and just accelerating wear on it. That's some extreme acceleration when you figure it's about four months between bearings. Um, the right side feels pretty tight, so I'm not sure what that might be. Hopefully these higher quality OEM bearings 
uh, will be the ones that actually do the fix on that. The other thing is those those hub nuts that go on to those bearings have a pretty low torque overall. I can't remember what it was on my earlier videos. It's been a while now since I've done one of these bearing jobs on my own, but it's a pretty low torque for a, a, a hub assembly. And so sometimes maybe over torquing could have occurred that might be causing accelerated wear um, and deterioration. First thing I'll do is replace that U-joint um, and I'm gonna do some research on that left uh, inner hub for the differential. So research complete. Um, some pretty good information out there on the forums that talk about that play in the left side of the uh, that shorter axle shaft that goes over to the left side that there's typically a little bit more play there. Not your standard roller bearings like you would expect inside there. It's pretty much just a spline and shaft set up on the inside with some needle bearings that kind of help it. It does get a little more slop over time. Uh, my amounts of slop don't seem excessive. And based upon that first trip to the dealer where they replaced the seals, I assume that uh, any leakage that there might have been occurring on that side has been taken care of. And first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take out that that half shaft and then go take it for a drive and see if uh, without that in there, if it eliminates that front end noise uh, and vibration from occurring. These uh, bolts have a flat side that pretty much goes up against the flat of this flange, uh, which means you can only get to it from this back side. So I gotta figure out which one of these sides is gonna be the best to get in here and get these broken loose on uh, with limited area to work. With that, the half shaft is out, so um, time to go take it for a test drive and see if the noise went away and pick up some U-joints. So here we go, we're gonna take it on to the highway and see what this does. I'm gonna go ahead and roll up the windows here. All right, well, I think we've narrowed it down. It's not a wheel bearing. Both of the front wheel bearings are behaving very well. We know it's forward of the transfer case. Uh, the first major defect that we know we have forward of the transfer case is that bad U-joint on the half shaft. So gonna go ahead and replace both of those U-joints and uh, slap it back in and give it a try. And hopefully we have finally conquered our problem. I'm gonna go ahead and put on some safety glasses because uh, as I'm pinching on these, you know, there's pieces of uh, uh, rust or metal or anything. Even like my tool can snap because I'm just hanging on the tips of it here. So, safety first. All right, so we got the replacement U-joints here. This kind has the, uh, the grease zert fitting in it here, which mine didn't have, uh, mine were sealed, but uh, from the factory, but this is the only option they had, and uh, they are the right kinds with the, uh, with the clips. So with that, I also picked up a press, it looks like a giant C-clamp, so that we can press these babies out. Chris Fix has a great video on the different types of U-joints and different ways of getting them out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that here. Uh, I've gone ahead and pulled the clips out as you saw. I've got, uh, had some WD-40 on here soaking these so that they'll be loosened up a little bit. And uh, I got a vise here. Got this on here, I wanna make sure that we've got, that we're not covering up the, the puck on the other side because it needs to be able to push down through the hole. 
and we're ready to start pushing that out. There we go. Flip it around to this side. Well, there goes all of those, and man, they are dry as all get out. I got needle bearings everywhere. You can see how, just how dry that thing is. Uh, there's not a bit of oil or grease in there whatsoever. Bone dry and rusty. You can see the needle bearings here look the same. There we go. Here you can see a lot of the dry rust. That's just totally dry. Um, same thing with there. It does have all the needle bearings, but there's nothing in there lubricating them. That side actually still had a little bit of grease left in it. And you can see there's a little bit of grease on there. So this side was better, um, still not good. And there's our other dry one. Here's all the dry needles just falling out of it. Of the four sides of this U-joint, we ended up having one, two, three of them that were totally dry and one that had just a little bit of grease still left on it. That's what 15 years and 170,000 miles will do to you. One thing I didn't do on this that Chris Fix uh, recommended was mark the orientation of this to the drive shaft that way when you put it back on there with the new U-joint this assembly has supposedly been balanced um, and you want to get the orientation back the way it was to preserve that factory balance but with this half shaft it's not going to be quite as critical as it would be on the longer uh, shaft in the back um, but I should have marked that and I will do that on this one all right, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and clean out these grooves real good. Make sure we get all the rust and gunk out of there. They've got filth muck on them. I'm going to use a rat file and just kind of knock those down a little bit for prep. And then finally, just going to take a little bit of emery cloth and just lightly go around in there. And clean up that bore. So we got our groups clean, we got our edge knocked down just a little bit anywhere there might be some burrs and we've got it uh, just lightly scuffed and cleaned up and now it's time to put in our new one. As you pull them off, nice clean surface, grease in there, nice clean cup with grease around all the needle bearings. They're all seated properly. You want to make sure they stay seated um, and we're going to keep them mated to the proper ones here. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and set it in here like this. And start to drop that in there like that. And now we are ready to get that first one going in. And we're just trying to get it down below that uh, where that clip will go in. Okay, so the clip's in there nice. Now we're going to tip it over here. Get ready to put our other one on there. Make sure it slides up in there real nice. And then we will press it down in. Now we'll go ahead and put these on. Again, double checking. Keeping them on the right side. And we are good to go, except these are both super tight. We're going to just give these a couple little taps here. Okay, that one's feeling pretty good. Okay, that one feels good. Now let's get this one. There 
we go. Now we've got a good new U-joint ready to go. All right, last thing to do is uh, go ahead and grease these grease dirts, and then uh, go ahead and wire brush these surfaces because we're gonna do the same thing on the truck before we put it in and we get a good mating surface. And we've got a half shaft ready to install. Alright guys, here we go, hopping back on the highway with the uh, new U-joints in, and fingers crossed that it is good to go. 70, sounds good. There's 80, quiet as can be, smooth, no vibes, no grindy noise, no howl. I think maybe we got our fix, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna go take this uh, tool back to O'Reilly's and um, and I'll catch you for a quick wrap up. All right guys, boy, I gotta tell you, am I freaking relieved that it seems that we have finally found the issue with this Titan. Um, after 11 bearings, new seals, new service on the front diff from that first dealer who was just giving me a, a bill of goods and selling me lesser quality OEM bearings. Um, to actually getting two good bearings in there from the dealer uh, and still having the issue to finally have narrowed it down, found the problem and replaced it makes me wonder if all this time that's what it has been. I will tell you, I think the key to this was um, removing that half shaft from the, from the front, the front drive shaft, so that we could really determine whether or not there was something that was connected through there that was causing any of the issue. At least that would narrow it down to that front differential. There could still be an uh, imbalance in those shafts, um, but that appeared to not be the problem because it totally went away without that half shaft in there. Uh, I do believe that that slop on the left side, based on what I read on the forums, uh, is probably normal. If it gets excessive, you might want to look at that, but apparently that's not our problem. Uh, on this vehicle. It is weird how this stuff travels, how the sound, the vibration, the feeling um, travels. I can buy the sound and the vibration traveling to the front and feeling like it was either front left or front right and vibrating my seat because of this, this bad U-joint, but I'm not sure that I could buy that, that transfer shaft, that, that front half shaft, actually causing me to wear out or accelerate the wear in these bearings. It could be coincidence. It could have been over torquing. Um, by the dealer, I, I mean, I don't know, it could have been low quality, but I mean, I went through Moog, I went through SKF, I went through uh, Value Advantage from the dealer. That's a lot of brands of bearings to be going bad, to be driven from that shaft. Uh, I don't know if that's a problem. If you think it is, and you know that, that's, that there's an issue that relates with transferring that vibration forward through the differential, let me know. I'd love to hear about it, comment below. And so it's time to start doing some other things this Titan. She's 15 years old. This year, she's got 170,000 miles on her, as we saw underneath. We've got exhaust rusting off of it. We've got shocks rusting off of it. So I'm thinking it's time for some, some uh, upgraded uh, coilovers or springs and, and definitely a, uh, a cat back exhaust, if not more, to get a little bit uh, more sound out of this thing and start making her look good because it is a good rust-free truck that, uh, that needs a little TLC. 
Will it come back? Only time will tell. But for now, that's it from Fearless Mods. And good luck to you if you are chasing one of these issues on your Titan. Take care.